Hi, my name is Sam Powell. I teach in the School of Theology and Christian Ministry at Point Loma Nazarene University. Today I'm talking about a book of mine, here it is, that the Church of the Nazarene's publisher, The Foundry, recently published. Uh, the title, as you can see, is The Trinity. Uh, the book is part of a series of uh, short books on the Articles of Faith. Uh, the name of the series is the Wesleyan Theological Series. The purpose of the series is, and I'm reading from the back cover, to discuss Christian doctrines in accessible language that states clearly what we believe and why. And it is designed for the theologically curious layperson, student, or pastor. Uh, this book arose out of a uh, presentation I gave several years ago at a conference for pastors in Mexico. And I recently gave the same presentation uh, to a different group of pastors in Mexico City, and it was pretty well received. And so um, I turned it into a book. And so let me ask a question. Why did I write on the Trinity? It's because I'm convinced that we in the Church of the Nazarene don't really know what to do with this doctrine. Uh, for many people in the church, it's just a doctrine to be believed, a doctrinal box to be checked, um, like we're supposed to believe it because someone in authority says we're supposed to believe it, but I think we can do better. Here's an example of what I mean. Uh, if you buy a set of tools, you always end up with some tools that you will never use or just rarely use. Uh, these rarely used tools come as part of the package. We don't want to throw them away because, first of all, we paid for them, and second, it's possible we may need this, them someday. But in the meantime, they just take up space. Or in the same way, uh, some of us have inherited things, family heirlooms and such, that we don't really need, and in many cases, we don't really want. But we feel obliged to keep them because they meant something to someone, or someone in the past found them to be valuable. So we feel that we should hold on to them. We store them carefully, and we may even put them on display, but still they don't perform any useful function, and they just take up space and they gather dust. Well, these examples of useless items are illustrations. In the Church of Nazarene, the Doctrine of the Trinity has become a tool that seems to have little use. It's like a treasured heirloom that we feel we should keep and honor, but which we don't really need, and we don't use it. Well, in my view, doctrines should perform some useful function. Um, each doctrine has a contribution, an important contribution, to make to the church's life and ministry. Now, for some doctrines, like sanctification, this contribution is easy to see. But with other doctrines, and the Trinity is one of these, the contribution is not so obvious. As a result, in our preaching and teaching, we tend to ignore certain doctrines. Just as the unused tool gets shoved to the back of the toolbox, or the heirloom eventually gets moved to the attic, is preserved but forgotten and remains unused. And let's be honest, part of the problem here is due to the fact that we've moved away from doctrinal preaching, but that's a subject for a different video. My purpose in this book was twofold. First, I wanted to show that the church, that the Trinity is a practical doctrine. And by practical, I mean that it is closely connected to salvation. It is not an abstract or a philosophical idea. On the contrary, it is as practical a doctrine as sanctification is. My second purpose was to show that the Trinity is not only a vital doctrine, but also a doctrine that makes sense of other doctrines. And to grasp this point, keep in mind that Christian belief forms a system. It is a web of interconnected elements. A doctrine, in other words, uh, doctrines are not silos, each with its own contents, but lacking connection to other silos. On the contrary, no Christian doctrine can be understood without seeing its relationship to other Christian doctrines. It's like a spider's web. When one part of the web is touched, it sets off vibrations to every other part of the web. In the same way, our understanding of one doctrine affects the way in which we understand every other doctrine. So how does this relate to the Trinity? In this book, I considered several doctrines, and one by one showed that they really only make sense if God is a Trinity. 
And so the doctrines are revelation, and I mean the concept, not the book of revelation, the concept of revelation, and then the doctrines of creation, salvation, ecclesiology, worship, holiness, spiritual gifts, the church's mission, and then finally eschatology. So let me offer an example, uh, salvation. Why is the Trinity necessary to salvation? Well, think about this. If salvation were only a matter of forgiveness, God would not have to be a Trinity. God would only have to be merciful and compassionate. But the Christian doctrine of salvation is about more than just forgiveness. It's about God having to become human and suffering with us in order to accomplish the transformation of human nature. For this to happen, God must be a trinity. God must be able to become what God is not, namely human, without ceasing to be God. Accordingly, salvation, as Christians understand it, requires the trinity. In other words, salvation makes sense only because God is a trinity. Here's another example, uh, the church's mission. Uh, the church is going out into the world. The important point here is that the church's mission is a continuation of God's Trinitarian mission into the world. Why does God's mission have a Trinitarian character? It's because the Father sends the Son into the world, and then the Son sends the Spirit into the world. And so the church's mission is a continuation of God's Trinitarian movement into the world. The church, is, the church goes into the world in the power of the Spirit, bearing witness to the Father who first sent the Son into the world. And so the church's mission, its going forth into the world, really only makes sense because God is a trinity, because God is a movement into the world. So, the Trinity then is a practical doctrine. In other words, it is an integral part of the Christian understanding of salvation. So, let me ask, why have we failed to see the Trinity as a practical doctrine? Uh, why is it such an abstract and philosophical idea for us, but one that really lacks connection to the church's practice? Uh, why has it become for us an unused tool or a useless heirloom? Well, I think it's because of our view of the Bible. Uh, we've been trained to cherry pick through the Bible, looking for evidence or proof of whatever doctrine we happen to be studying. Like bees, we fly from one biblical flower to another, gathering pollen that we can then use to construct our doctrines. But when we proceed in this way, when we think of the Bible in that way, uh, we lose the connection of one doctrine to another, right? These doctrines then become silos, each with its own content, but disconnected from each other. We end up with a pile of scriptures for this doctrine, maybe eschatology, and a different pile of scriptures for that doctrine, perhaps ecclesiology, but we end up with separate piles and separate doctrines. There's a better approach and that is to step back and look at the Bible's message more globally. Uh, when we do so, we see that the Bible is about God progressively uniting with humanity until finally God becomes human, suffering and dying with us, absorbing and then nullifying the power of sin and death. And then subsequently, through the Holy Spirit, God draws us into God's own life in acts of sanctification. When we look at the Bible in this way, we see that the doctrine of the Trinity does not rest on some particular pile of biblical passages. Instead, the Trinity is the church's way of understanding the God who is revealed in the Bible, the God who unites with humanity, who dies and who draws us into God's own life. In other words, the Trinity is a biblical doctrine, not because we can find some passage in the Bible that proves the doctrine or states it in some explicit way. No, the Trinity is a biblical doctrine because it is a way of summarizing the way in which the Bible describes God. 
If we think along these lines, then we can dispense with some of the embarrassingly bad ways of preaching about the Trinity. Uh, for example, the Trinity is not a puzzle about numbers. It's not an attempt to answer the question how one can be three. Uh, likewise, we can get rid of some of the really bad metaphors that we've used uh, to illustrate or even explain the Trinity. For example, this, the, and we've, heard, we've all heard these, the three states of water, ice, steam, and liquid, or the three parts of an egg, the yolk, the shell, and the white. Uh, these kinds of material metaphors, they don't help, and they're actually misleading. It's much better to present the Trinity in the way in which the Bible itself does. To present God as the one who overcomes humanity's alienation by entering into that state of alienation, and then by drawing us back into unity with God. If we think about the Trinity in this way, then it becomes a preachable doctrine. It's not an incomprehensible teaching about a being that we can't understand. It's not a doctrine that we should believe as a matter of duty because we think it's revealed somewhere. On the contrary, the doctrine of the Trinity becomes the living heart of the Bible's testimony to God. Well, as you can see, I'm pretty enthusiastic about this doctrine and its possibilities for the church's preaching and teaching. I hope this short video encourages you to become enthusiastic as well. If you have questions about uh, what I've presented or just want to dialogue about the Trinity or any other theological topic, please feel free to contact me. Uh, my email is uh, spowell at pointloma.edu. I'll repeat that, S-P-O-W-E-L-L at pointloma.edu. Uh, finally, um, I want to introduce the next video in the series on May 25th, uh, Montag Williams, my colleague in the School of Theology and Christian Ministry, will be talking about uh, his recent book, Church in Color, Youth Ministry, Race, and the Work of Theology, published uh, just this year by uh, Baylor University Press. So blessings upon you, and I hope that you found this this uh, short video to be helpful. Blessings.